Okay, shit, we got it now. <laughs> we here, we here, we good, we good, we good. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Rico Report. I usually like to let this thing rock a little bit, but you guys should be able to hear me now. Let's go. Here we go. Let me get this beat going. Here we go. Let me, just a little bit. Let me rock a little bit. Let me rock a little bit. I need to get my vibe back up. My vibe was almost taken down, but we back with it. It's the Rico Report. It's the Buffalo Fanatics. Sometimes technical difficulties do happen. But we here now. You know what it's for you guys, man? You guys are like, yo, make you muted, man. Let's get this thing up. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Rico Report. Look at that. That was good timing. Good timing. It's the Rico Report. Welcome. It's the Buffalo Fanatics. And I, I'm glad you guys are tuned in with your man. <laughs> Y'all are like, yo, thank goodness this mic is working. You know what the, you know what the messed up part is? I was I was actually on my my, my mic and doing my, my audio and I was just on with Dan Mitchell. So I'm like, my mic is working. And uh I was adding some last minute pictures so I can, you know, what I mean, get this show going. And whenever you have your audio, your 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 phone and your mic going at the same time, the sound goes on. So I muted everything. It's like, oh, that thing is annoying, but I forgot to turn it back on. But guess what? The Buffalo Fanatics, y'all are y'all are good people, but you're like, yo, man, your mic is off, man. We want to have a good show. So we gotta, we gotta, we gotta come correct. So, folks, welcome. Y'all was about to spit some, spit some bars on that bitch, boy. You feel me? You feel me? But we here, man. So, um, welcome. It's the Buffalo Fanatics' it's Regal Report. We got things to talk about today. So, folks, you guys saw the thumbnail. You saw the thumbnail, and there's a reason. Now, this is no slight to Vikings, all Vikings fans. It's not. Because there are some really good Vikings fans that just don't. I mean, they're they're about their business. They're about Kirk Cousins, Dalvin Cook. You know what I'm saying? Uh, feeling, I got a feeling. You guys know who that is. And they got themselves a nice rookie. Well, not anymore. Justin Jefferson. But yet, Vi some Vikings fans feel the need to keep crying about not having their guy, right? So I was, I was reading, there was some kind of, there was some guy that, that came on. I got to put him on blast. I don't know who he is. He's some kind of junior editor, writer. I don't know. Adam Patrick, Mr. Straight Cash, homie. Um, He posts a little something called, I mean, he goes, yo, there's a lot of eyes in here from Mr. Team Player. So my man's is still salty. He's still salty. I, didn't, I don't know why. I really don't. So our guy, Stefan Diggs decided, I mean, I guess he was, uh, somebody was asking some questions, he's answering some questions, some legitimate questions, and he went, I want five Super Bowls. I want five Super Bowl rings. I want the Hall of Fame. I want the glory. I believe I'm a champion. God, what is wrong with that? Tell me what's wrong with that. Absolutely nothing. When I saw that, I said, well, you're damn right. You're damn right. And for those that are his teammates, should say, you know what? I want to follow that guy. He's no diva. He's not that. He's not that guy that we should watch out for. Like, I mean, what are these Vikings fans crying about? Y'all, your organization is what made him feel some type of way. I would. I. I want to say y'all pushed him away, but I don't want. I can't say that. I don't got a proof for that. But usually, when a player starts to kind of voice his opinions and voice his dissatisfaction with their club something's not right and so he did and guess what big baller bean came a calling it's like batman when batman puts the batman the bat signal in the air that was that was big baller bean he's like boom i saw that tweet let me put it out there digs you see that digs is like oh shit they're coming to get me they're coming to get me and that's exactly what happened but yet you have people that like to take little pieces of, of, of things and blow them up, right? So this was, this was the statement, part of the statement. And Vikings fans are up in arms. Well, one bozo, at least. But like, here is the rest of it. This is what, was, this is what prompted it. He says, I want my brother Trevon to have a good career. 
I want to give my mom a place where she can be comfortable. I want to give people jobs. I want to do more for D.C. That's my city. The mountaintop isn't just for football, man. It's life in general. How do you not want to want to have a teammate like that? How do you not want to go to battle with a guy like that? He wants, he's got ambition. He wants to win. And you got Vikings fans crying. Why? Why y'all crying, man? And it's not all of you guys. Because I know some of you guys are like, man, shut up already. He's gone. It's facts. But they're still hurt. But y'all got to remember, you guys got to realize. The reason he might have felt slighted in a way is because y'all started showing a little more love to Adam Thielen and, and working yourself away from passing the rock. And if you did pass the rock, you are going towards more of Thielen's way. And on top of that, you're running the rock with Dalvin Cook, which you should when you have a back like that. But my goodness, some Vikings fans just can't let it go. They're upset. What y'all upset about? Justin Jefferson is a dog, man. Y'all, that was a smooth transition, if you ask me. You kept a really good receiver in Adam Thielen. You brought on a, a rookie that's probably going to be end up being the number one freaking receiver on that team in another year. What y'all crying about, man? Vikings fans, man, let it be. Let it be. What are y'all mad about? Yes, my receiver had led the league in receptions. Yes. My top dog receiver was one of the leaders in leagues in, in, in receiving. Yes, I'm aware. Y'all had that. All y'all had to do was show the man some love. And y'all didn't want to do it. So guess what? Bills fans, we'll embrace Stefan Diggs. And we will show him the love that he deserves. And he's getting it. He got it all last year, man. And the chemistry between both quarterback and receiver is... Mucho bueno. It's fantastic. But these Vikings fans can't let it go. He's a diva. Bills fans, you're going to wait and see. He's going to ruin your team. Do that. Is that what Vikings fans sound like? I'd like to imagine that's what they sound like. He's, he's, and they do this face too. <laughs> he, he's just going to be a diva. <laughs> so I saw nothing of that sort. You know what it is? It's like you were you were chopping it up with your girl. You guys were together for a long time. And your girl was like, yo, I'm I'm just I'm not I'm not happy because you keep eyeballing everyone else, not me. So you're like, you know what? You're right. I am. You admitted it. So y'all broke up. You got your other girl that you were looking at, Adam Thielen, Vikings and the Adam Thielen. And y'all said, yo, you can go do, do you. Okay. It should be done. Fini, man. I'm with my girl. You're with, you go do what you got to do. And then a year later, I'm sitting there paying attention to the girl that I didn't want. And I'm like, oh, look at her. Look what she's doing. Who's she dating? Now she thinks she's, look at her working now, getting all fit. You know what I mean? All the guys are looking at her. But your girl is still here. What you worried about that girl over there that you did have? Yo, get out of here with that, man. You salty. You know what I'm saying? Grab some agua. You know what I'm saying? Get some, get some water in your system, man. There's a, there's a, Haitian, there's a Haitian saying, and it's not going to sound as good in English, but sometimes when... When we, when we get too excited or we, we get too, you know what I mean, out of control or out of sorts, we say, hey, put some water in your wine, man. Put some water in your wine. Vikings fans, put some water in your wine. Just chill out. Hand, yo, you're good with Justin Jefferson. You're good with Adam Thielen. Let us be. What you mad for? Yo, what you mad for, man? Have some water. Put some water in your wine, man. You're good. You'll be all right. You'll be all right, man. Yo, shout out to my guy, right Thiel. Rico, we had a lot of salty fans when we cut John Brown. I don't hear those same fans chirping about Emmanuel Sanders. Smash those likes, fanatics. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. I mean, shit, the writing was on the wall for John Brown. 
I mean, we all knew that. And if you didn't, shame on you. Shame on you. Shout out to my guy, Dylan. Man, Rico, you clowning on Friday, man? I mean, shit. We having a good time, man. We having a good time. It's just, it's for Vikings fans that do come on here. I'm not trying to hate on your team. I'm just saying, enjoy what you guys have. You guys already have, you know what I'm saying, your top dog in Dalvin Cook. You have Adam Thielen, which is a great receiver. You have Justin Jefferson that's going to be a star in this league. What you over here looking at us for? What you over here looking at me while I'm over here? <laughs> you know I mean? I'm going to remix that. Chilling over here in Buffalo. Yo, leave me alone, man. Shit. I'm just saying. So Vikings fans, be cool. You guys, you guys have your hands full with Aaron Rodgers. If he even does come back, you have your hands full with the Chicago Bears. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. Get it together. <laughs> My man Brian Barrett says, yo, they're upset because they have cousins and we have Allen. <laughs> Brian, stop it. Don't do that to them. They like Kirk Cousins. Captain Kirk. They, they cool with Captain Kirk, man. They like Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk, he, he can play. He ain't no Josh Allen, but he can play. He can play. Eric Austin Phelps, just a little improvement in the facets of our game. We will be tremendous. I can. I, I ain't even sweating it. Oh, me either, man. I ain't, I ain't sweating it. I just got to I got to remind Vikings fans. They got to chill out. That's all you got to do. You got to chill out, man. You got to just remind them to chill out. Chill out. Now, uh, before we get into... Um, the the meat and potatoes of our show today. I gotta give a huge shout out. I gotta give a huge shout out. I gotta give a huge shout out to my guy Pierre the Kingpin, the Kingpin himself. If you guys have not noticed, I need you guys to go to his Twitter page, go to our Facebook page. You know what I'm saying? Instagram. My man had a brilliant sit down article with affiliates of Fox and other places. And he really, he really put his foot in this interview, man, to give you guys a perspective of what Buffalo fanatics is about. What Buffalo fanatics is, is, is thriving to do striving. If you will, like we're not done, but along the way we've, we've, We've done some some big things. We've we've faltered sometimes as well. But man, we are ascending. We are on our way. And my man, Pierre the Kingpin, yo, he put his foot in that article. Do me a favor. Go ahead and, and jump on that article, man. Cause he did it. He put he put he put us on the map, man. He gave he gave love to the team. He gave love to the supporters. Y'all been supporting us since day one, man. Love. Love for you guys, man. So I appreciate that. And just for that, smash that like, people. Smash that like. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of the of the night. So I'm sitting here just reminiscing, reminiscing on Buffalo Bills football. And then I got then I got to thinking. I got to thinking. Rico, what's up? Tighten up. What up, Billy Scott? It's been a minute. Season's about to start, baby. Let's go. I got to thinking, man. And I'm only going to touch on this little bit, and then I'm going to move on to, the, to what I really wanted to touch on. This Julio Jones thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm done with this Julio Jones thing, right? I just had to say something because a lot of people are still kind of up in arms about we, we can't give away stuff. I was just on a show with my man, Dan Mitchell. Y'all go check out my man, Dan Mitchell. He's trying to do something that's really difficult. That's a show every single day of the week. Shout out to you, man, because it's not easy. But if you can do it, Salute to you, man. But Paul from Hashtag Sports, that's a good dude himself. Mario over there, they, they do good stuff. But Mario and, uh, excuse me, Paul and Dan did not like the, the, the thought of having um, a Julio Jones on the Buffalo Bills, right? So then I, I just, I, and I wanted to make this point last week, but I didn't get a chance to because I had so many points to make. I left this one good one out, right? And this is it. If you, if, I know there are some Lakers fans in here and I can only speak to my Lakers fans. And Laker fans, remember when we had Lonzo Ball? I was a fan of Lonzo Ball. I even got his jersey upstairs, right? We had Josh Hart. I love Josh Hart. 
I I I I fell in love with Josh Hart, man. B.I. Brandon Ingram, like them. You know what I'm saying? Kyle Kuzma, fan of Kyle Kuzma. He's not playing very well right now, but Kyle Kuzma's nice. We had some, we had some young talent on that team. Jordan Clarkson. Love Jordan Clarkson. Right? Julius Randle. You know what I'm saying? We had Julius Randle on the Lakers. Like, I can go on, right? But there was a vision. We want to win championships. And to win championships, you may have to part ways with some bodies. Shout out to my guy, Michael Green. Welcome to the Bing Squad, baby boy. Let's go. What's up? So you got to part with some people. And if you guys are Lakers fans and you know what I'm talking about, it was it was difficult for us to get rid of Lonzo Ball, Jordan Clarkson, Julius Randle, uh, uh, who's my who's my dude? Uh, you know what I mean? Ice in the veins. Like I'm, it's it's eluding me right now, right? We got rid of a lot of young talent to move things around, but for what? For LeBron James. LeBron James. Yeah, LeBron James. So you bring in LeBron James, the best player in the world right now, at age thirty eight, washed king. There's some ballers in this game. Dame Lillard, Mitchell, all them cats. But you bring the best. He comes to the Lakers. Now he makes the team better. Right? He makes the team better. But guess what? There were some things we had to do to bring LeBron on. He, got, he had a year with Lonzo, all that stuff. We had to make some moves. Guess what? We need AD. We need AD. That's the way we're going to win the championship if we bring that guy right there. But what about this guy? What about Lonzo Ball? What about Brandon Ingram? What about Jordan Clarkson? What about them? They're pieces, not superstars. So guess what? They moved them. <gasps> Blasphemy. Oh, wait a minute. We bring AD on. What just happened last year? Championship. Late show. Come on, man. That's the point. That's the point. When you when you you gotta do some hard decisions, you gotta make hard decisions in order to get to the final destination. And the final destination is the championship, the Super Bowl. So I bring all this up because if you bring a Julio Jones on, it is like an AD. And who's to say? That isn't the piece that we need to go to the championship. Look at the Raptors from a couple years back. They bring one piece. Kawhi, the Claw Leonard. Championship. Just saying. Somebody had the nerve to say bad analogy? Are you kidding me? That is the, that's the analogy. You, you got to move the pieces that, that the young future, right? Because that's the complaint right now. But we need to build for the future. Lonzo was part of the future. Jordan Clarkson was part of the future. Josh Hart was part of the future. All young guys. Gone. AD, come here. Braun, come here. Championship. Bad analogy. Are you kidding me? Come on, John Heron. And I end with that. So we may not even get Julio Jones. I'm just, I just brought that up just to get, just to put the nail in the coffin. I'm done with it. We're moving on. We're, we're moving on. We out of here. You saying? Shout out to my guy, Billy Scott. He says, yo, yo, even though I'm not a Bills fan, I got to give respect when it's due. Keep up the great work. The grind don't stop. Billy Scott, salute to you. You don't deserve the bell, but I'm going to give it to you because you're showing love and you're from the Titans. And we owe you guys a freaking beat down. We owe you guys. We do. I want that rematch. <laughs> I want that rematch. And we're going we to get that ass. We got to. So, I move off of that point. Let's get right to the football talk. So, I, I got to thinking, folks. And we, we are in a, uh, we're, we're in a position that some fans are like, yo, I don't even look at the bills from 2014, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. 
I'm I'm so far gone and so past that, right? And there are fans that are like, I still think about those days and it haunts me still. So I wanted to know, I need to know, what are what's a what's a play, a single play that happened that still is in your in your in your heart in your soul like you still feel it to this day you think about it and it it haunts you i I need a bad what's a play that's gonna haunt you for a long time or a game a game or a play in your in your fandom whether you've been a fan of the team for seven for 40 years 50 years since the 60s 70s whatever and if you're a new fan from five years ago what's one play that sticks in your mind where you're like, oh, I to this day will remember this play and I'm still hurt by this play. Yes. <laughs> Scott Blakely hits it with the, he hits on the wide right. Wide right. We, we, we get, as a Bills fan, we get toyed with wide right to this day. Don't they? Don't they kill us all the time? Oh, uh, wide right. The bills are wide right, and we they get us all the time. What else stands out to you guys? What else stands out to you guys as the a play or a game where you're like, <clears throat> I'm still stinging from that thing. I'm I sting. Musical city effing miracle. Yup, that's two. That's two. Why check throws it forward. And they just tr- they just rumble down the field for the touchdown. Oh, the hurt. The hurt. What else do you guys have? I'm curious. We're not talking about good plays, guys. We're not talking about good plays. We're talking about ones that, that still hurts us today. Let me give you guys one. Actually, you know what? My man Bobby put a graphic together. I hope I can, I can show you guys, and, it's, and it's, it comes out pretty clean. Where did it go? There it is right here. I hope it comes out clean. Which Bills haunts you to this day? A Bills L, right? Whether it was a loss in a play, a loss in a game, but what L did we take, right? Number one, wide right. Scott Blakely hit us up with that one. Music City Miracle. Do you guys remember the, the 2013 game? Let me take you guys back. We're in the playoff contention. 2013, I believe Trent Edwards is our quarterback or was it Fitzy? I think Fitzy was our quarterback. Yeah, it was Fitzy. Fitzy's our quarterback. And we're marching. I think Stevie Johnson catches the ball, fumble, goes back to Atlanta. What the hell? Okay, we still got this. We're still in this game. Scott Chandler, fumble. (laughs) Double fumble in that game, and we lose the game. God. Do you guys remember? Because Pierre was telling me about that game. He says it still sticks to him to this day. To this day, he's hurt by it. That was a big one. That one is a big one. Tommy Rhodes, thank you. This one, to this day, hurts me. That game was ours. That game was ours. And we let him off the hook. We let him off the hook. We did. Golly, we let him off the hook. Here's another one. I don't know if anybody's brought it up yet. Monday Night Football. You guys remember that one? The crowd is rocking. Guess what? Your boy was at the game. I was with a Cowboys fan. One of my one of my best friends. He's waving the towel. He thinks he's got it. Right? Pick. Ooh. George Wilson. Let's go. We're, we're, we're just doing it. We're doing it. And then we lose the game on the last second field goal. Oh, my gosh. I, honestly, I've never in my lifetime heard a stadium so quiet. So quiet. I could hear the other side of the field. People swearing. I was like, whoa, never have I been able to hear as clearly as I did that night walking through the tunnels to go back to our vehicles 
Oh my goodness. You near the concession stands, then getting outside, grown men crying. That game, whew, it's a bad one. It was a bad one. What about? Let me let me take this down real quick. What about this one here? The Watson Magic, the 2013 uh, fumbles. You know what I'm saying? What about that Leotis McKelvin? Do you remember that one? Against the freaking Patriots? We're up 24-19. Leotis McKelvin, we're about to ice the game. Game is up. It's over with. Leotis McKelvin, punt return. Boop. Fumble. Oh, my goodness. And that was, I don't know if you remember that. That was the the time where Leodos McKelvin, McKelvin was getting threats. His lawn was like defecated on and they threw all this stuff and they were giving him death threats and all that stuff. Yeah. Remember that? Oh, boy. Leodos McKelvin, I think, will always remember that play. There you go, Dylan. The Monday night game against the Pats in 09. McKelvin decides to be a hero and run the ball out of the end zone. Oh. Oh, my gosh. Can you believe it? It hurts. Yo, there was a time period where, you know, Juan Castillo, the BS calling Cody Ford that eventually led the Texans loss. Oh, my gosh. You guys are there. Nate Peterman versus the Raiders. Freaking Groundhog Day every drive. You mean the Chargers? Yeah, man. He's throwing pick after pick after pick after pick after pick. It wasn't good. I think that's one That's one moment that McDermott is going to be like, I should have never did that. I should have never did that. I should have never put that young man in. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. <laughs> he was not ready. Was not ready. If you guys, listen, I'm going to tell you right now. You guys already know the deal. I've already, I've already sent, I've sent, um, what do you call, um, the Bing Squad. You guys already know what it is. I sent you guys numbers. If you guys want to call in and you want to explain a moment in time where you're like, man, I'm always going to remember this, right? Look at this. Anthony Rufus says, the game that haunts me is the Cardinals Hail Mary. Oh, Hopkins. Over three guys, oof! That's always gonna that's gonna hurt us. For, that's gonna hurt us for a while because every time they think of, they think about Hail Mary, they're gonna think about that game. Hopkins goes up over three freaking defenders, unacceptable, unacceptable. If you want to call, you want to call in. It's simple. I put the phone number in the community tab for the Bing Squad and the Bing Squad only. If you want to call in, it's a call in show, baby. You guys get to call in and talk about whatever L play that you just, you remember to this day and you hate it. Or a game where you're like, remember this game? Oh, yes. Too many. I remember going to the Saints. Remember the Saints came to town and they just absolutely just destroyed us. We were just a joke to them. Oh, yes. And that was just a few years ago. They killed us. Was it the Saints? Yeah, it was the Saints. Boy, did they come marching in. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. Now, you want to know one game that I, that 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 stands out to me that I'm like, I'm, I'm always going to remember that? Stevie Johnson dropped. It wasn't a proud moment for him. He knows that. He talked about it. But, man, that was going to be the, that was, that was a moment. That was going to be a great moment for us. To take that, take that, take that, take that, drop, man. Now there was there was a time period, and this is why I said there's two. There are two fan bases that, and I'm crossing over. I'm crossing over, but I'm not quite over the the threshold just yet, because I still I still scar from the atrocious football that we've displayed on TV, right? Because sometimes when the game is going on, and we didn't have many of those moments last year, the year before, maybe the year before that, 
there were games where we're like, we're up, we're doing great. And then we do, we, I don't know who coined this phrase, but we, we end up doing billsy things. What a billsy loss, right? I don't know who coined that, that phrase, that terminology, billsy. But for a very long time, what's up, Mr. Plow? What's happening, bro? There are some billsy moments that we've had. And I still have PTSD, if you will, of when these, these games are going on. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't like this feeling. You guys know what I'm talking about because we all go through it. We're all Bills fans. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, good. Woo. Good job, guys. <laughs> we squeaked it out. I'm crossing over where we're down, but I'm like, we got this. We're up. And I'm like, we still got this. And I'm, I'm slowly not looking back. But there are moments where I'm like, oh, could we be going back to the billsy ways that we used to have? Because there are plenty of them. <laughs> the just give them the game, that's sometimes how it felt. Because you're like, yo, I can't take it anymore. This thing, this thing that the good Lord put in my chest that's supposed to pump him, pump me full of blood. Yo, it's pumping too much. You're going to give me a heart attack. I'm done. Turn the TV off. I can't take it. How many, how many of those games where you're like, oh, my gosh. Yo, you're rocking in your chair. You're like, oh, what's going to happen? You can't look. You put your head down. Last minute field goal. <gasps> right? Team nails it. You're like, come on. What span? What, what, what span of years? 07? Yo, that PTSD is real. It's not a joke, man. We still go through it. Always freaking out inside. Sorry, always freaking out inside. Yes, certainly for the Seahawks game last season. That was a beautiful. Those are the good times. I might save the good times for next week. But we're talking about because we've been in it so long, I feel that we could talk on it for quite some time. If you guys want to call in, the number's there. You guys know what number it is. Call in. I got everything set up. Well, let's do it. Scott Blakely says, I have the strongest ass muscles because I've been watching Bill's games for 50 years. Boy, you clenching them cheeks, boy. <laughs> clenching them cheeks. Tell you, man, this team has had us in for doozies. That's why it feels that much better that we're winning. And it's like it's becoming a, a cultural, normal thing. But boy, did we, did it take the right coach, the right GM, the right owner to make a mistake and then learn from his mistake, right? But we had to go through it. But man, did we ever, did we go through it for way longer than we should have? That's the real question. We didn't, we didn't need to go through it for that long. Golly. I'm already past that stage, man. My man, Pierre Kimpin says, yeah, I'm past that stage. No more PTSD for me. I'm healed. My therapy, <laughs> it worked out for me. JA17 MVP gets me feeling we're never out of it. That Colts playoff damn game did give me a slight <laughs> billsy feeling, though. Yo, that Bills game against the Colts? Knock it down. Don't play games. Don't let Phillip Rivers come in there and try to, try to mess this up for us. This is our window. I'm telling you, man. Yo, Luis says, yo, Rico, that's our mark. We're always expecting the worst. See, we, that's that PTSD because we, we tend to be in that, in that mold of like, damn it, what's happening? We're down in our 20, three minutes to go. We don't got this. Are you kidding me? Who's our quarterback? Oh, Fitzpatrick. Oh, God damn. Who's our quarterback? Not EJ Manuel. Oh, can't do that. Although EJ Manuel did have a great comeback against the Panthers. I'll give him that. But how often are we like, oh, Tyra Taylor? Oh, we're not getting nowhere. Oh, right. Tyra Taylor had a beautiful chance. Let's go back. 2017, 2016, 2016. We're playing against the no, actually it was the it was it was uh it was McDermott's first year, I believe. Week one, Panthers. Yep, week one against the Panthers. 
beautiful ball thrown by Tyrod Taylor. Who's on the receiving end of that ball? You guys know who it was? Tell me. You know who it was. Wonderful ball. Just beautiful. All you have to do is turn the correct way and the ball will fall in your hands. Nope. This receiver by the name of Zay Jones decides to contort his body in a weird way, look in the wrong angle, and just off the fingertips. Can you un- can you believe that? What an ugly game. Yes, thank you. It was an, it was an ugly game. We could not put points on the board, but that would have won the game for us. We would have won that game 10-9. <laughs> 10-9. If we score that. Trent Edwards. JP Lossman. Some bad. Yo, we had some not great teams, man. Who we? Scott Blakely. For those fans that were not alive, trust me. This team is championship caliber. Bill Polian and, and Marv Levy. 2.0. I think they may be better. They may be better than the '90s. Enjoy, damn Scott, for real. Because some I've had some folks tell me, "Listen, everybody, pump your brakes. This team is a very good team, but they're not as talented as the '90s team. The '90s team had way more talent. Also, the game was different back then. There weren't all these freaking rules that allow the offense to just do whatever the hell they want. I even I think I asked Steve Tasker that. Do you see a big difference between the 90s team? And he says, they're different. They're different. But, like, don't sleep on this 90s team that we just had. That, were, that was a good team. Jim Kelly, Andre Reed, Thurman Thomas, golly. Reuben Brown was on, you know what I'm saying, on, the, on these 90s teams. Bruce Smith. Yo, we had some, we had some players on that team, man. But. When I look back at this 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 team that we had, and I'm like, come on, man, we we can be we 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 have such a potential to be such a good team, but we just never had the quarterback. We never had the quarterback. We had all the little the, we all the, all the talent around, but just never had a quarterback. Could just never land a quarterback. We were so close to landing Roethlisberger, but we what did they did we give up on Roethlisberger? I think we gave up on Roethlisberger and went somewhere else. I think we took John McCargo. Oh, my gosh. Let's not even get into the drafting. We had some doozies. We definitely had some doozies. Folks, but we're in a different ball game now. We, are, we have a team that is healthy. We have a healthy front office. The relationships are, are, are flourishing, right? GMs are getting poached from other teams. What? We never used to have that. It, it was three years. The whole team, the whole the whole front office. Yo, you're wiped out. We're, we're starting all over again. Now, now guys are getting poached? Good shit. We've turned things around. PTSD is going to be no more. I mean, shit, I, I, I've never had PTSD. I don't know if PTSD just stays with you forever. But we have an opportunity to cut all that. Man, oh, man. So are there games that stand out to you guys? Are there more games that I don't know about that you're like, yo, remember this game? Do you remember how bad it was and we didn't do well? Here's another one for you. We have the ability to make the playoffs. Win and we're in. What game am I talking about, guys? You guys know. Win and we're in. Kind of like what the Dolphins have to deal with. Let me give you a hint. We played this team first week of the season. Do you remember that game? We were playing up against the backups. The backups. Willie Parker. Right? Remember fast Willie Parker? I think think the quarterback was Maddox. Tommy Maddox was the quarterback, was the backup that came in. Fam. We lost that game. Antoine Randall L. was doing his thing on us. 
That's a name I haven't said in a long time. And we lose the game. All we had to do was win it. All we had to do was win. Oh, Big Ben was picked just before Lostman. Okay, that's what it was. But we came back for Lostman. We came back for, for Lostman. We came back in the second round. We took him in this 22nd pick. So I have a feeling we, we skipped on Blitz, uh, We skipped on Roethlisberger. Something tells me we skipped on Roethlisberger. But nonetheless, nonetheless, excuse me. Tough times. We lose to the freaking backups. That's when I was like, oh, man, we're cursed. We're done. We're done. Nobody's, nobody's taking us for real. Nobody's taking us. Matt Soda says, Bruce struggled in the Super Bowls. Scott Blake says, yo, we got potential, Rico. They have the ingredients. I think we do, man. I really think we do. You know that I have not, I, I try not to go and watch the Super Bowls, the Super Bowl games anymore. I just don't want, I can't, I can't stomach watching our team lose not once, not twice, not three times, not th but four times. And I'm like, and, and some people are like, yo, our stars didn't show up that game. Our stars did not show up. Like, how could we not? The Redskins, that, that game we should have had, that was our game. But we got our coached. Was it the Redskins? Am I saying it right? Or was it the Giants? Can't even remember. Was it the Giants? I think it was the Giants. Yeah, it was the Giants. Freaking Giants. They ran all over us. Just kept going. Run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. Keep that high-powered offense off. And we had no answer for it. Oh, man. Had we had some way to adjust, maybe, just maybe, we win that. Just one Super Bowl. Just give us one so we don't have to keep hearing about. Yo, four Super Bowls, though, honestly. Four Super Bowls. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm young, right? So, like, a lot of these games were muddy to me. Like, back in the 90s, I was, I was born in 86, 84, excuse me. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I wasn't really heavy, heavy, heavy into football. I was just getting started into football. And I chose the team that was losing. That was the team. I was like, I like that team. I like the uniforms. I like the logo. I like all that stuff. And I'm like... We're in the big, I guess it's a big championship game. All right, we got this. Loss. Loss. We lost again? What? All right, I'll stick to this team, though. Man, does that hurt. We've had some painful years as Bills fans, man. We've had some painful years as Bills fans. That's why it feels really good to see what we're doing right now. Feels really good. My man Kingpin says, yo, we, we yeah, we skipped. We passed we passed, then came back for Lossman. That's how I remember it. Yeah, we skipped on Ben Roethlisberger. I remember it. I remember like, yo, why are we skipping on this guy? What? Okay. I was. I remember like, I remember seeing. I'm like, this is a this is the this is a white quarterback that's got a lot of swag, man. I'm like, I like this guy. Maybe we can have Ben Roethlisberger come to Buffalo. Nope, we skipped. Who do we take? Is it John McCargo? I can't remember. I can't remember. And then we went into the second round, the draft, and then we came back. Into the first round, the pick at 22, and we picked up JP ja, ja, Lossman. Man. Boy, oh boy. John Yoda says, I was listening to the Redskins game on radio, traveling to Oakland to go to work. Man, that is the worst. You're listening to your team get blown out. Turn the radio off. <laughs> there was a, at that time, there was no button to just kind of, it was just like, er, off. Can't do it anymore. Was it Lee Evans? We took Lee Evans, and then we came back with J.P. Lossman. That's why they, those two kind of grew up with each other. There was a connection. Stevie Johnson even said it. He's like, J.P. Lossman had a great connection with Lee Evans. It was, un you couldn't, that was his guy, right? Stevie Johnson even said it. But me and Fitzy, when Fitzy came through, him and I, we are the ones that kind of started building a chemistry, and then boom, that's what happened. But boy, oh boy, do Bills fans have PTSD. And we still feel it to this day. I know I do. Whenever certain things are, are coming up and I'm like, mm, 
I don't like the feeling of this at all. This isn't going the way I, oh, wait a minute. They're marching. Why aren't we stopping it? Why are they running the ball 24 freaking times and they're getting five yards of carry? What the heck is happening? Let's get a stop, boys. Let's go. We were always a bend but don't break. That's what I always remembered. We, we weren't a great team altogether. We weren't horrible on defense, but we used to give up stuff, man. We were just bend but don't break. It was our offense I was usually challenged because we just never had that go-to quarterback. That was that guy until Josh Allen came to Buffalo. Because after, after Jim Kelly, Bledsoe was probably one of our more successful quarterbacks. He had a, he had a season of what? what 30, 30, 3, 000, more than 3,000 yards, 4,000 yards? And that was it. He had one good year with us. And it was over with. Fitzy comes in. We give him $59 million. And we're like, nah, we're good, fam. We out of here. And then Doug Marone comes through. Golly, man. The amount of coaching that we have had. That is just not well. Like Mike Malarkey, he quit on us. Didn't even take the job. What he did one year, Mike Malarkey. Oh my gosh! Then we brought back Marv Levy as the GM. I was like, what? What are we doing? No, 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 no. This can't be. Yep, we did it. What a what a what a terrible time to see how the organization organization was run that time. The organization wasn't well run, and we stuck with this team. Through and through. That's why this 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 fan base is the best. This fan base is the best. Anthony Rufus, don't forget about Doug Flutie. Oh, my man, Doug. Dougie Doug, CFL Doug. I know what very well, Doug. I know very much about uh, Doug. Doug was the man. Wade Phillips was probably one of our better coaches. But Wade. Wade in the water. Yo, Wade. Yo, you messed up, bro. <coughs> you put in Johnson before Flutie? Was that the right decision? You must be kicking yourself in the pants when you see when you hear about that, man. Yo. Yo, Mr. Plow says, yo, Rico, when we win the Super Bowl, we will cherish it like no other fan base. No other fan base will be as deserving. I can wait. I can't wait till it's our time. Fam, let me tell you, man. It is going to be epic when our time comes for us to win this damn Super Bowl. Epic. I told wifey already. You are either coming with or you staying behind, but I'm going regardless. If I've got to damn well put that damn needle in me and get a jab to go, I'll consider. I'll consider. Cause that's a, that's like it's a one time thing, man. It's not easy to just. It's the fact that Tom Brady has seven freaking Super Bowls, fam. The man has seven rings. It is incredible in itself. Just I just want my team to win one. Just let us win one. That's all. Just let us win one. I'll be I'll be I'll be thrilled. I'll be happy. I'll be happy. So, folks. The floor, the floor is yours. Whatever y'all want to talk on is yours. Y'all want to call in? The call in. If you guys are wondering, yo, how do I call in? How do I become a member? How do I do all that stuff? Supportbf.com. Become, become part of the Bing Squad. Go to our YouTube page in the community tab. Actually, you guys all got an email. Go check your emails. The number's in there. If you guys want to call in right now, and you want to chop it up with your boy. Let's go. This is your opportunity. This is the opportunity. So, folks, when I'm looking at the around the NFL, while you guys are kind of scrambling to go and check your emails and stuff, right? I was looking at the top selling jerseys in the game. And I was like, who who's up there in terms of you know what I mean? Who's making money? As a top selling jersey. Yeah, you guys are gonna lose your mind when you see the top 10 to 12 list. Let me give you the top five list. All right. It's insane what I'm seeing here, folks. It's insane. Look at this mess. We got 
Tim mother effing Tebow. Not once, but twice. Tim Tebow is the number one selling jersey right now. This man hasn't even made the 53-man roster yet. We don't even know if he's a freaking lock to make the team. But he's selling jerseys like hotcakes. Unbelievable. Tom Brady. He's number six. Justin Fields. Making money. Look at Justin Fields. Three, four, five. Unreal. Tebow Fields Brady. Look at this list. Look at number look at look at number 15. Burroughs. You got Rogers up there, which is legit. Unbelievable. I would I'm surprised that Josh Allen and Diggs aren't up there. I would have sworn that they would be up there, at least in the top 15, right? But golly, that's craziness. Tim Tebow is leading the way. <laughs> Tim Tebow leading the way, man. We're we're in a different time, folks. We're in a different time, man. That boy doing it right now. That boy's doing it. So, we have an opportunity to go around the league. If you guys are wanting to call in, the call-in is simple. You go to the community tab in our YouTube channel page. Go to the community tab. You just scroll over, right? It goes videos, this, that. Then you go to community. Then there's a message just to members. If members are not really good with looking at that, check your email. The number's there. If you want to call in, it's up to you. If you're nervous, I get that part. Now, it's not, it's not for everybody. It ain't for everybody. But the number's there if y'all want to call it. Because this is the last part of the segment of the show. So I figured I'd open it up to you guys on whatever you guys want to speak on. But Tim Tebow is leading the way with the highest. <laughs> He's number one and two in terms of in terms of who is leading the way. Unbelievable. Unfreaking believable. So when I'm looking at this Bills roster, the OTAs and what's going on in the OTAs, I hope you guys are paying attention. I have a conversation that I was having in with, obviously, I don't know. You guys are probably a part of a lot of group chats. If you're not part of a lot of group chats, you're probably in a lot of, you know what I'm saying, Bills fan pages and just jumping in and, and commenting. So the one position that I wanted to discuss is the receiver room. And it's always seems to be a hot topic. It's the receiver room. So we're going through it again, right? And it comes on, and by the way, a big congratulations, a big congratulations to Reed Ferguson. Reed Ferguson is now the highest paid long snapper in the NFL, man. Yo, congratulations to Reed, because Reed is a good dude, first and foremost. I've had him on on uh, on my show a couple times, actually. I had him solo dolo, and then I had him with the three musketeers, the three amigos. You know what I'm saying? It was him, Mr. Bass, straight bass, homie, and then we had our punter, Bo Ho, right? We had the three of them on there just chopping it up. It was dope. If you guys haven't had a chance, if you haven't had a chance to go and check out that interview, go ahead and check it out. I had all three of them, and I was navigating, right? Boom, asking questions, keeping them all going. I was all my money. Awesome time. Now, I bring this up for a reason, right? What does what does Reed Ferguson have to do with the receiving core and all that good stuff? Uh, let me get to it. So Reed Ferguson gets a three-year deal. And shout out to him because he's got what? I think uh, Sal, Sal put it out there. 549 snaps, right? Without a blunder. Well-deserved. Well-deserved for Reed Ferguson. Good for you, fam. He's a second... Longest tenured bill on the team behind Jerry Hughes. Go ahead now. So here's why I bring this up. So Stefan Diggs, number one. Cole Beasley, number two. 
Emmanuel Sanders, number three. Gabe Davis, number four. Isaiah Hodgins, five. Isaiah McKenzie, six. Question mark? I didn't say Stevenson, the rookie fifth rounder. We still have Tanner Gentry. Kumaro. We got some receivers. So here's the deal. The reason I bring this up, Reed Ferguson is out earning a couple of receivers on the back end. Isaiah McKenzie being one of them. Don't forget, Isaiah McKenzie got a one-year deal, right? So the long snapper, and it's, it's optics. I know they play different positions. It's all different, but it's the optics. The long snapper is making more than our receiver in Isaiah McKenzie. So then, then it made me start thinking, is Isaiah McKenzie's position on the team a lock? Is it a lock? Don't get me wrong. Isaiah's my guy, man. I love that dude, man. He's a genuine good person. Football aside, A1. But is his position a lock? He's our sole kick return now. Roberts is gone. Roberts is the guy that took kick returns and punt returns. So there's Roberts. We drafted Stevenson to eventually be the return guy slash receiver. So it's going to be McKenzie and it's going to be uh, Stevenson. Add in Tanner Gentry because he's going to be returning punts as well. And I'm sure he's going to put his nose in there and he's going to be part of this receiver squad. So Hodgins takes the fifth spot. We need to fill the sixth spot with one of these three players, in my opinion. Mackenzie Stevenson, Gentry. So then let's go deeper into this. So this is the conversation we're having today. So Mackenzie's going to be our leading, our leading return guy, right? By default, his job to lose, or is it? So let's just say, he starts struggling, not full, not holding on to the punts enough, or whatever the reason is. I doubt it's going to happen. Let's just say it does. That now propels Stevenson to be the sole kick return, punt return guy, because that's why we brought him there, to do double duties. So now that drops McKenzie down. Remember that money thing I was talking about? Reed Ferguson makes more than him. So how valuable is McKenzie on the squad? Especially they didn't, they didn't, they only brought him back on a one year deal. Money was scarce. So now you're like, oh snap. So does, do you keep both McKenzie or try to keep McKenzie and Stevenson on the team and then cut Hodgins? Do you? This freaking receiving, this receiving room is going to be interesting, man. And don't, don't sleep on Tanner Gentry either in this situation. It's McKenzie's job to lose, but if he starts to struggle in any type of way, and I'm sure the leash is probably going to be tight, it shouldn't be because he didn't give you any reason for it to be tight, but it could be because of the drafting of Stevenson. And if Stevenson starts showing out and shows that he can do both on what McKenzie does in returning and part of the receiving game, where does McKenzie fall? <sighs> Tough Tough times for the coaching. It'll be very interesting. So pay attention to receiver five and six. That's going to be a battle in camp that is going to be worth watching, worth reading upon. Because right now the the media, they still they're still in a in a moment uh, in a way can't do can't tell us anything. They can't tell us where who's lining where, what they're doing is they're still restricted. It's so terrible to the point where John McClain, I think his name is John McClain or John McCain, John McClain, um, he covers the Texans. They took off the name plates on the players and they just put with, I think, I think they took off the numbers as well. I think it's just a jersey, a jersey with no name plate, no number. So, you know, you don't know who's who. He's like, how are we supposed to do our job and speak on this if you give us nothing? Those are the times I win right now, man. 
Those are the times that we're in. Extremely interesting. This receiving position, this receiving battle is going to be something. It's going to be something. But guess what? I think we'll be just fine. I think we'll be just fine. I think people are, are going to be surprised by how this roster is going to be made up of. If you go to the defensive side of the ball, the defensive line, there's going to be some things we got to do on that side. There's just not enough spots for the, the bodies that we have. Let's, let's be real with each other. There's not enough. If we're, we kept nine last year, we talked about this, man. It's going to be very interesting. Is somebody going to be redshirting? Somebody get hurt? I don't know. I'm not trying to wish that anybody getting hurt or anything, but somebody get cut. Is Jerry Hughes going to get cut? Are they keeping Jerry Hughes? Are they going to cut Addison? Don't forget, we have two, three players that are under two years of service. Epinesa, Boogie, Russo. Then we got Bam Johnson. That's a good, a key special teamer. They like him. Jerry Hughes, Mary Addison. And those are just the defensive ends I'm talking about here. What, we kept like four defensive ends, five defensive ends last year? So check this out. Jerry Hughes, Jerry Hughes, Mario Addison, Russo, Basham, Epinesa. There's your five. Where's F.A. Obata? Is he gone? You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be tough, boy. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a hell of a time. Bam Johnson. What do you do with Bam Johnson? You're going to cut Bam Johnson? There goes, a, there goes a core special teamer. Woo! McBean, y'all have a job to do. Y'all have a job to do. It's going to be tough. It is going to be tough. Look forward to it. Pay attention to OTAs. Pay attention. We'll try to bring you as much coverage as we can. Um, right now, Dane Jackson is looking great. Dane Jackson is looking pretty solid in practice. He's where he's supposed to be, which is great. It's awesome. It's good news to hear. We got to keep paying attention to that. And then we, we will find out. There's nothing really going on. It's just OTAs. You know what I'm saying? Wait till camp starts. That's when the real starts. That's the real stuff starts to happen. We shall find out, my people. We shall find out. Now, before I get out of here, folks, I, like I said, the floor is open. If y'all want to call in, the floor is open. The floor, the floor is yours. The lines are open. Y'all can call it. It goes strictly to the Bing Squad. If you're trying to find out how to become a Bing member, a Bing Squad member, support bf.com. It's that simple. Jump on in. Prospect Watcher says, yo, no, it's not. We brought the competition, and it won't cost us anything to cut them. There's a lot of guys that we brought in that we're just going to get rid of, but there's going to be guys that you're like, ooh, I liked him. He's been part of the Bills for a while. I don't want to cut that guy. We may not have a choice. Because the guys that you don't want to cut are the ones that are coming with a heavy price tag or a heavy enough price tag that makes a difference. A la Jerry Hughes. A la Mr. Via, uh, Mr. Addison, Mr. Butler, right? There are some, there are some guys out there. There's some, there's some fellas out there. So it is going to be a hell of a time, folks. It's going to be a hell of a time. We don't know what's what's going to happen, what's going to take place. But I can tell you this, man. We're going to field a very competitive team. From top to bottom, we're going to field a competitive team. And I don't want you guys paying attention too much to, <coughs> excuse me, paying attention too much to the likes of the Steelers, paying attention to the Ravens, the 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 Broncos, the Chiefs, the Raiders, the Chargers. We we can't focus too much on those guys. You're probably like, yo, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Those are the guys that we should pay attention to. No, we should be paying attention to the AFC East. Figure that part out first. Win that division first. Then you can worry about all the things you need to worry about. You think New England, when New England was whooping tail? They're worried about all these other teams. No, they wanted the East. Let me take care of the East. And if I have a good enough record, I got to buy. And now I'm well rested. And now you can bring me on the battered teams that are becoming the pace me because they just went through a battle in the first round. Tell you folks, 
we not we need not concern with the likes of the Chiefs until later in the season or when we have to face them. We got to finish the AFC and we got to finish these these guys in the East. That's where it starts. John Herring, he says, I'm concerned. What are you concerned about, John? What exactly is John Herring concerned about? I'm, I'm very curious as to what you're concerned about. Hold on a second. He says, we, we could cut Butler tomorrow as far as I'm concerned. How does a 330-pound player not be able to play one tech? It's tough, man. Some guys, some guys, they're, they're big. I'm not saying he's soft in any way. But, I mean, you get a little older. You get a little older. Maybe the strength is going down a little bit. Quickness is not as there. I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of things that 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 alter a player's a player's abilities, right? So we'll find out. We'll see. We'll see how how camp plays out. If camp plays out the way it's supposed to, maybe he's gone. Maybe we would rather keep a guy like Russo that can play inside and out. Not three tech, obviously not uh, another one tech, of course. But I've seen him play inside collegiately. So we'll see. We'll see. My man, uh, Mr. Plow, I'm looking for your comment. You said you made a comment, so I'm trying to look for your comment. See if I can find it. I don't see that, kid. Oh, there we go. He goes, uh, Rico, should we be concerned at the All-Star? Excuse me. Should we be concerned at all that Star is a no-show? Oh, Mr. Star. <sighs> you know what? My man, Judge, had a really good comment. He says... There were several players. I, I didn't think we should be worried. About, I mean, I mentioned that we should not be worried about players that didn't show up. However, I did have an issue with Starla Tula not being there. Because, A, he hasn't played all year. But on the flip side, he's a veteran in the game. And by and when I mean that he's a veteran in the game, meaning he knows how to take care of his body, and he also is a student of McDermott. He's been with McDermott since day one, so he knows what McDermott needs from him. So am I worried that he's not at OTAs? Not necessarily, but I can see why people are concerned that he's not there because he hasn't been here all year. You have the likes of Devin Singletary that wasn't there. Stefan Diggs wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? So bring your ass in. These guys played last year. In the in the words of Steve, my man Judge was like, yo, this these guys played last year. They were here. At least we know what they bring to the table. You haven't been here a full year. There's a whole new freaking roster around you. Get your ass in. I'm not so much bothered by it. He just better show up and show out because we can't just sit there and cut him because we restructured his ass. So right now, he's on the books. If we cut him, we're bold. We are bold if we cut Starla Tule. And I don't hold anything past this team. I think they probably would. I really do. But folks, oh y'all, y'all feel the bottle? You know what, you know what funny thing is? Wifey found this bad boy at a thrift store. And she's like, fam, look what I found. I was like, what? Let's go. Uno peso. A dollar. I was like, Yo, what Yahoo gave this up? Well, another another man's trash is another man's treasure. So, folks, that's it for me. I really enjoy doing these. You you guys know the drill, man. This is this is my thing. This is what I like to do. Uh, I do want to address though. I do want to address something, man. And I want to I want to address uh, before I get out of here. I want to shout out to the true people that that fuck with Buffalo fanatics and the true people that fuck with your boy Rico. I'm talking to the third person, but that fuck with me because anytime that we put something out there, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's a rumor, whether we're this, whether that, I mean, we, we don't just put bullshit out. If we hear something that's pretty decent or that that's credible and you know what I'm saying? We kind of piece things together. We don't just put shit out just for no reason. And Whenever things that we put out there get put out there, oh boy, do we see the nastiness for people come out there. Things that you would have never heard come out of people's mouth. Oh, they start piping up. Pipe it up. Pipe it up. Pipe it up. Anyway, I appreciate y'all. 
y'all y'all hang tight y'all been rocking with bf and y'all support and that's love i see it i see it i used to be all raw raw defending all that bullshit none of that no more i'm all about peace baby peace and love man no more fighting i ain't fighting with nobody man we stay in our own shit what do they call them called keyboard warriors yeah i mean you know those keyboard guys man those little those twitter fingers Twitter fingers are going, man. Oh, it's it's comical. And I don't I used to get I used to want to fight them all, man. I'm like, yo, uh, uh, man, please. I do not have the bandwidth for all that nonsense. <laughs> so yeah, man. So I appreciate we we appreciate. I'm not even gonna say I we appreciate because we see the real ones. We see the people that are in the chat. We see that y'all out there defending and saying, yo, man, calm down. You know what I'm saying? This that the third. We appreciate it. We see it. So salute to you guys. Um, are they jealous? I don't know, man. Who knows? You know what I mean, because if if our if my name doesn't have a little check mark next to it, you know what I'm saying? Well, it's not credible. Well, we've been breaking stuff before. Have we got stuff wrong before? Absolutely. Have we got stuff right before? Absolutely. It's the territory. You know what I'm saying? We don't go out of our way doing this shit, but shit, shit comes to us, and we're like, oh, all right, let's look into it. We handle it. You know what I'm saying? But there are a lot of haters out there, boy, oh boy, and they come out. Do they ever come out? But y'all stay true to the to the squad, and we appreciate it. Um, and uh, we'll continue to kind of, you know, what I mean, bring you the news that you guys deserve, right? And uh, we'll go from there, folks. Season is upon us, man. Fantasy talk is coming soon. I'm about to start getting in my fantasy bag because, yo, the 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 jig is up. Everyone knows about Josh Allen. Everyone knows about Josh Allen now. So if you guys are jumping on Josh Allen, you better jump on that quick. You better hope you're the first, you're the first bit in the snake to get on Josh Allen because I don't know, man. I've had Josh Allen two, two years in a row now, and I've been I have been uh spoiled, if you will. I have been spoiled. So um I'm gonna try to see if I can get Josh Allen again. Hopefully the group that I'm in, they they kind of they're like, no, oh, Josh Allen was a fluke. I'm gonna try to push that narrative. I don't know if Josh Allen could do it again, man. I think it was I don't know, man. Like we had Stefan Diggs. I don't know. Yeah, he's some trash. Yeah, he's some trash. Drafted in the first round. If I can get away with not drafting him in the first round, <laughs> I pick up a receiver, a running back in the first, and then jump back and pick up Josh Allen in the second. Mmm. That might be a that might be a strategy. That might be a strategy. Hey, my man, why? We got you covered, Rico. I appreciate you, dog. Appreciate you, fam. But I'll tell you right now, man. Mr. Paul says, yo, Rico, uh, we can start a fantasy league for the Bing Squad supporters. I call dibs. That might be an idea. I I kind of I slowed down on fantasy. I used to be in like in three, four leagues. And I just I was spreading myself thin with three and four leagues. So I just did one league and I I was the commissioner for the first time. I think I did a damn good job being a commissioner. Um, and we had a pretty good group. I had a, I had a couple people that were flakes. So I got to, you know, move on from them. Can't have that shit. But uh, it was a good league, man. It was a good league. I'm very, I'm very happy about it. Uh, somebody, somebody put me on to this. Uh, I was, I was always a CBS guy. Tried and true for CBS. But then somebody was like, yo, get off of CBS. And you need to go to, uh, what is it called? Sleeper? What's that? Sleeper app? I can't remember what it was, but it's a great, it's a great uh fantasy app. And I was like, yo, I'm a fan of this one. I'm gonna stick to it. I can't remember what it is. I think it's called the sleeper app, but shit. That was a great app and I appreciate it. And it was good stuff, man. So I'm a I'm gonna keep on that. I'm gonna keep on that, man. But yeah, fantasy fantasy talk is going to start soon, folks. So be ready for it. Be ready for it, because we're gonna we're gonna do it up. We're gonna be talking football. I'm trying to look for the app that we had. I think it's called the sleeper app. I think that's what it's called. But yeah, man, I was going to do Yahoo. And I was like, ah, I don't feel like I don't like Yahoo. And I was going to do NFL.com. I was like, nah, I don't like it. But that sleep, that sleeper uh, fantasy app, primo. And uh, so, and, and you know what? I agree, man. Yes, I think it's called the sleeper. That is sleeper, right? So um, somebody said, uh, who did it say? It's all about Yahoo. I don't know about Yahoo, man. Yahoo doesn't do it for me. I don't know. Yeah, I tried Yahoo one year and I was like, nah, I'm not good. Nick G, perfect. Two leagues. I might go two leagues this year. But because I'm a commission in one league, 
I might just I, I have my hands full already. I'm trying to make sure everything's good and organized and people are paying up their money so we can pay them out at the end of the season. So we got to make sure, man. I was this close. I made it to the playoffs and uh we we fell short. Too many injuries, man. Injuries get you. I had a I thought I had a pretty good squad until some injuries got me and I was like, mm, we done. We done. Tommy Rose says, yo, we got y'all back, fam. Ain't nothing but love, man. I appreciate that, Tommy. Yo, when these haters try to come after us, man, yo, just put them in their place because I'm not going to do that. They're just waiting for me to come and talk that shit. Yo, y'all handle that. Goon squad, y'all handle that shit, boy. <laughs> but yeah, man, so um, be ready for fantasy football talk. I'm going to start bringing that fantasy talk in here and uh, and then we'll go from there. My man Pierre was like, yo, what did Pierre say? Pierre's like, yo, two leagues in is the max. Dynasty league is the new thing. Oh, yeah, Pierre's been Pierre is a part of this dynasty league. And I don't know about this dynasty league, man, but he seems to have fun with it. He seems to be doing big things with his fantasy league. But uh, I like I like my fantasy league the way it is. PPR league. I like the PPR leagues. The PPR leagues are legit. I wasn't I wasn't I never took part of a PPR league until this time. I was like, great. And on top of that, you get to customize your your league in this in the sleeper app. So I'm 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 way with it. I'm way with it. I'm all the way with it. Yo. Uh, Kanika says, yo, Rico, having caught a live in a while, just saw you did an interview with Stevie Johnson. That's major. Yo, that's my guy, Stevie Johnson. Yo, let me get, let me get, let me get. That's my guy, Stevie Johnson, man. You got to give love to Stevie Johnson, man. That boy came through and he did the damn thing, man. And that's my favorite bill. You guys have been hearing me talk about it. My favorite bill all time. I don't care what anybody tells me. Thurman Thomas. Thurman Thomas is great. Actually, that's another guy I should try to get on here. I should try to get Thurman Thomas in. You think I can get Thurman Thomas? Come through and chop it up with your boy. We'll see. We'll see. I've had Andre Reed. I had one, one, one third, one fourth of the greats. So maybe I can kind of get Bruce Smith, maybe Thurman Thomas, Jim Kelly. Who knows, man? Who knows? We'll try to work it out. But yeah, man, I appreciate you. I appreciate you guys. So if that's it, nobody wants to call in today. That's cool. Wait till the season starts. The season starts. You guys are going to be one of the calling like a mother effer, boy, but it's all good. So folks, that's it for me. We're going to get out of here. It's been real. You guys have been great. Rock with me. I hope to see you guys on Tuesday. Be there, be square. Monday night, it's going to be the Bills, guys. Dave Money Tilt. My man Judge. I think my man Kendall is going to be part of that, too. So let's do it up. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Buffalo Fanatics. It's the Rico Report. Rock with me now. Hey. Yo, I'm feeling this beat. I'm feeling this beat. That's it. So I'm out of here. Yo, you guys already know what I do, man. Y'all, y'all be kind to one another, man. Yo, enough of this talking ish. Be the difference. Be the difference in someone's life. You never know. That is the difference that keeps them, you know, saying staying on a positive path, man. I'm just saying. So until next time, ish your boy. Let's go. Let it rock. It's your boy. And I'm gone. Let's go.